So the first thing we need to look at before discussing Fourier series is ordinary vector spaces. Any vector can be decomposed as a sum of several components with the coefficients vi telling you how the component in the eith direction how much of that there is and the total vector is then the vector sum of all these things so that's our understanding of ordinary vector spaces and ordinary vectors now when you talk about functions how is it possible to take a function f of x for example and decompose that into a sum of several functions in every direction it may not even seem to make sense because f of x could some, be something like e to the x squared uh, or e to the minus x squared and you know that to be a, a bump function like this like the bell curve how can the bell curve be written as a sum of several pieces that doesn't seem to make sense at all moreover how can that bell curve be written as a sum of pieces each of which is perpendicular to the other one like that so uh, to some degree your skepticism is uh, honorable because it doesn't seem to make sense to break a function up like that in any sense that a vector can however the greatness of uh, Fourier is that he found precisely a basis where that can be done and this is the basis of um, vectors so think of these EIs as sine nx or you can also have a basis of cosine nx in fact if the function is odd you have to use sine nx if the function is even like e to the minus x squared then cosine nx has to be chosen or more generally using Euler's formula you can simply use e to the i nx as your basis where n is an integer positive or negative so these are um, orthogonal sets you can show for example and I have in the notes that if you stick to the interval minus pi to pi and you take for example sine of nx times sine of mx dx now that is in fact the definition of ei hat ej hat for this basis so this can be written as sine nx comma sine mx so this orthogonal inner product or the orthogonal um, pairing is in fact given by the integration over um, negative pi to pi with the measure dx okay that's the definition of the dot product this will turn out to be equal to delta nm in other words it's equal to zero if n equals um, n not equals m and it's equal to um, one if n is equal to m but uh, there's a normalization constant and so we'll have to think about that that normalization constant is actually related to pi so if you actually uh, solve this problem you'll get this factor of pi so if you uh, have you can define if you want unit vectors ei hat or en hat as sine nx over root pi taking into account that and then with respect to this inner product or the integral pairing en em will exactly be equal to delta nm so that's the beauty of Fourier's theorem that you can do this now uh, the actual uh, theorem of Fourier is stated on the interval negative pi to pi or a total interval length of 2 pi later on I'll uh, show you in later in this video how alternative forms can be written so the most basic form of the Fourier uh, theorem is called the sine cosine form this tells us under very appropriate and very suitable conditions which are not at all very restrictive the function only has to be um, somewhat piecewise continuous and piecewise differentiable and things like that it's very general the hypothesis of this theorem and more details are given in my uh, weekly notes there that function any function f of x can be anything it can be things like that e to the minus x squared or cosh or cinch and in the homework assignment you'll have practice doing this for several kinds of f of x you can write f of x as some constant term 
which for normalization reasons we are going to write as a naught over 2 plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity a n cosine n x and the sum from n equals 1 to infinity b n sine n x. So the price you pay for writing it in this basis of sine or cosine is that you need an infinite number of terms and that seems to make sense if you're going to after all break up something that looks like a bell curve we're talking about an almost impossible situation here you're taking something that looks like a bell curve and write and telling me that it's going to have frequencies corresponding to even an odd harmonics. So you better have an infinite superposition of frequencies to create this voice pattern. Okay, so if you if someone makes a sudden shout like ha, huh, then that voice pattern looks like that. And you're saying, well, a singer saying ha huh, is the same as an infinite combinations of tuning forks with infinite frequencies, you better um, make sure that's an infinite set or you will not get that uh, impulsive sound that the singer makes. So this is the uh, um, decomposition, the basic decomposition of uh, Fourier's theorem. Now once you have this decomposition, then you can write down what A0, AN, and BN are simply in terms of the orthonormal relationships there. Now remember, if you multiply cosine, oh by the way, cosine and sine always gives you zero and sine and cosine always gives you zero. Those are also standard facts of uh, these bases. So if you want to find A0, what you do is you multiply both terms, both sides of this equation with whatever kills these terms. And that is uh, simply killed by integrating sine and cosine over negative pi to pi because sine and cosine when you take sine and cosine over that interval, they're going to have equal number of uh, amount of positive and negative area. So sine and cosine will be killed simply by integrating over negative pi to pi. So that's what we're going to do. A naught will turn out to be 1 over pi, the integral from minus pi to pi, f of x dx. So simply by integrating this entire thing from minus pi to pi, you get rid of these two terms and you just keep the A naught term. And the pi comes because of the fact that the interval goes from minus pi to pi. And then a sub n can be got by multiplying this whole thing with cosine. Then sine and cosine will not interact well. They'll give you always 0. Cosine by itself again will give you 0. And cosine and cosine have a, as a chance of interacting because cosine and cosine, just like sine and sine, gives you delta nm times pi. So this gives me 1 over pi. Again, that pi is a normalization. Negative pi to pi f of x cosine nx dx and similarly b sub n is 1 over pi integral minus pi to pi f of x sine nx dx now if you chose to multiply it by sine mx instead of sine nx then the only change that will happen is you'll get bms here because what you'll get on the right hand side is going to be delta nm and so you have to change n to m in order to make this non-zero. The last uh, thing I want to talk about is uh, the slightly different form. If you don't like sine and cosine and you want exponential, well, no problem. Euler's formula can be used to write this in a complex form. And this is usually preferred sometimes in engineering applications because sine and cosine are treated equally in Euler's formula. So integral minus infinity to infinity, observe the range of uh, n now, e to the i n x. So the fact that it's going from minus infinity to infinity means that if the function is even, then you'll only get the cosine terms by the fact that the minus infinity uh, to zero terms will have the sine with the opposite sign as the ones from zero to infinity. So the sine terms will cancel out, giving you just the cosine terms. And if the function is an odd function, the opposite thing will happen and the cosine terms will disappear, giving you just the sine terms. So, so this captures everything. of, uh, And then the function uh, Cn, the constants Cn themselves can be got by the following 
procedure, you multiply both sides by e to the minus i m x, and then you use the orthogonality relation, which I'll probably write over there. Um, C. Well, I'll, I'll write it right. Um, no, I'll write it here. F of x e to the minus i n x d x, and the orthonormalization relation I wanted to write was this e to the i uh, n x times e to the i m x. Here you be careful. Uh, if you have exponentials, then the appropriate way of thinking about the dot product is going to be the complex conjugate of e to the i n x times the Hermitian conjugate, that is, times e to the i m x dx. And that's going to be the same thing. Uh, this, guy, this time it's going to be 2 pi times delta m n. So that's the result we have to use. Now, uh, about the various forms, this, this is for intervals negative pi to pi. What if we do not have the interval negative pi to pi? Then how can we proceed to find the Fourier series? It's uh, quite simple. We can just uh, use scaling. So suppose we have instead of instead of if you have from um, negative pi to pi, we have negative l to l. Let's say that this covers up just about everything. For example, if I take negative 2 to positive 2 or negative half to positive half, this covers all those cases. Then all we have to do is make a normalization. So f of x will now be equal to a naught over 2 plus sum goes from n equals 1 to infinity a sub n cosine n pi x over l. In other words, we are trying to set the right hand side by this normalization when x equals l right hand side becomes pi so it's n times pi it gives you the same result as you have, as if you put x equals pi here when x equals pi you're going to get cosine n pi well to make that happen you just divide by l so when x equals l i again get cosine n pi it's as simple as that and then the sum from n equals inf 1 to infinity for the bn parts I'll get sine of n pi x over l. And then for the, uh, if you want to write it in complex form, then this is going to be equal to the sum from minus infinity to infinity of uh, cn e to the i n pi x over l. So in this manner, you can um, do that. So a of n in this case will be instead of 1 over pi, you'll now write 1 over l integral minus l to l, f of x, cosine of n pi x over l, dx, and bn will be written as 1 over l, integral negative l to l, f of x sine, n pi x over l, dx, and uh, lastly, cn is 1 over 2l, because you always have that 2 2 pi type of thing, 1 over pi here, 1 over 2 pi here, so there's always double the amount in the denominator when you're dealing with the complex coefficients. So f of x e to the minus i n pi x over l dx. So that uh, completes that kind of normalization. Now what if you don't have an interval that's uh, sitting pretty uh, in, a, in a sense symmetry in, symmetric in both directions, but rather you have an interval like this. What if you had 0 to 2 pi instead? Well, what we do here is, here we just alter the limits above, keep rest the same. Amazingly enough, this procedure is sufficient to deal with this term. Similarly, if you had 0 to 2L, then um, do the same thing except you're dealing with these formulas for 0 to 2L and everything remains the same you'll have for example what I mean by everything remains the same is this a n is going to be 1 over L 0 to 2L and that's b n is going to be 1 over L 0 to 2L and c n is going to be 1 over 2L 0 to 2L so that's the only change you're going to make if you had uh, intervals that don't sit symmetrically.